Hello friends, hope you had a good time for the past 6 days by attending the international webinar lecture series Jade Case 0.2 organized by the Department of English Nyanprasarak Mandal's College and Research Center Asagao Mapsa Goa. I am happy to welcome you all for the 7th and the last day of our webinar lecture series. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all and a warm welcome to the resource persons for today's sessions. All the six days we had speakers who motivated you to learn from their experiences. Today's resource persons are going to train you how to handle a camera and shoot and how to prepare jewellery with paper. Benjamin Franklin said, tell me and I forget, teach me and I may remember, involve me and I learn. Without sharpening your weapon, standing on the battlefield would not increase your chance of winning. College education doesn't assure you employment but the skills what you learn does. There are so many soft skills like effective communication skills, teamwork, dependability, adaptability, problem solving, critical observation, conflict resolution, leadership, problem solving, etiquette and list would go on. The hands-on training what you learn would help you in times of crisis like this COVID-19. Learning classroom training of e-learning, cooking, baking, painting, embroidering, video shooting, photography, jewellery making and there are n number of skills to be learned. The first speaker is Mr. Shankar Natkarni who was our student and became our colleague for a year and at present teaching at Saraswat College Korlim. The second resource person is Ms. Bhagya Lakshmi Kedekar who is presently pursuing MCOM in our college. Thank you both for accepting our invitation and for supporting to organize our webinar. I am happy to introduce Mr. Shankar Natkarni who has done his MCOM in our college who has additional qualifications like practical course on computer application and tally ERP. He is a certified photographer from Stendak Academy of Professional Photography, Panjim Goa. Worked as an assistant professor at Government College of Arts, Science and Commerce, Ankali and worked as assistant professor at SS Dempo College, Panjim from 4th July 2017 to 30th April 2018 worked as assistant professor in our college for the year 2018-19. to 19. He has attended various workshops and seminars and faculty development programs at state level and at national level. He has also attended various national level webinars during the pandemic period. He had organized one month certificate course on basic DSLR photography at our college from 17th August to 24th September 2018. He had won many intercollegiate fashion shows, dance competitions, mime and quiz competitions. He was awarded the best NSS volunteer award at his undergraduate college. Very helpful and accommodative. I remember the days of intercollegiate teachers competition called Guru Shrujan where we used to practice together and I had observed him personally giving ideas and suggestions for the events. The photos which he had taken after the event is still in my mind. He took beautiful photographs with dif different angles, something which I treasure it. He is going to give training not through DSLR camera but with the help of his mobile. I present before you Mr. Shankar Natkarni who is going to speak on mobile photography and photo editing, tricks of the trade. Over to you Shankar. Hello everyone, my name is Shankar and today's topic is mobile photography. Before that, let me thank Department of English of the Ankrosarag Mandals College for giving me this opportunity to teach you something. Now in this video, I will divide into two parts that is editing and the tips which I will give you at the end of the video. Now in editing, today I will use an app called Snapseed. It is very easy to use, made by Google, absolutely free of cost. In this video, I will show you how to take this image, turn it into this. Also I will show you how to add fake clouds or sky into this image so without wasting any time let's jump back into the app so here i have opened the photo in the app so this is the layout which you will see at the beginning one part is the looks and second part is the tools looks are basically the filters that you may want to use in your photo without doing anything to the photo just normal filters given by the app itself we don't want to do that at the first we are not here for that so let's go for tools this is the basic layout which you will get in the snapshot first thing first is the tune image basically it will allow you to change different aspects of the image brightness contrast saturation whatever to do that just 
press and hold and if you just go up and down you will see that it's a menu okay so it lists all the things which you want to change so first thing first i want to change the brightness if you go too overboard it is too bright if you go too dark so i'm going to slightly increase the brightness at the same time contrast basically it does it pulls out the color into opposite direction if you just increase the contrast it makes black even more black and the bright part orange makes it more grungier so you don't want to go overboard with it keep in the limit so i'm just going to increase the contrast a slight bit around 36 that's good for me saturation basically increasing the saturation of the colors which are there in the photo so i'm going to slightly saturate it because i want to make that merge look nice that so i'm going to make it for 37 it's good ambiance it increases the atmosphere around the photo it increases the lightness of the photo if you increase the ambiance it makes the image look much more brighter looks like it is filling with light if you decrease it it removes the light so as per your choice you may go ahead with whatever you want i want to increase the ambiance slightly so the camera the old classic camera looks really nice highlights now highlight what is highlights there are two parts for the image that is highlights and the shadows highlights are basically the brighter part of the image and that is like my shirt if you see right now it is the highlight okay the shadows second part is the shadow the darker part of the image that is highlights and the shadow so if you want your highlights that is the brighter part of the image to be affected you can go down you can just swipe left and right okay so i'm just going to re- reduce the uh, highlights so that there is more detail is popping out from the camera shadows take it down it will bring out the depth it will give more depth to the photo so i'm going to just going to go go slightly less shadow uh, 20th warmth basically the warmth of the photo basically do you want your photo to be very cool or very warm if you take it very warm minus 100 it looks like it is in a cold environment if you take it to plus 100 it looks like it is in a furnace so i'm just going to slightly make it warmer so that mud looks very very yellow i'm going to do it so this is by default it's looking nice from this to this if you press and hold on the screen it will go back to the original image if you just remove the but the finger it looks like this the edited part second part is details now what's detail is it will allow you to change two aspects that is structure and the sharpness structure basically make, makes the image more rugged if you increase the structure you will see the entire camera also with the uh, mud on the surface is more, making more rigid right so rugged i would say so i will slightly increase it at the same time sharpness increase the sharpness of the image now here note that you do not want to increase structure for all the images if you editing a face you may go want to go down a bit minus it so that the face is slightly smoother don't go overboard with the the uh, structure going to minus making it look like a cartoon face don't do it go slightly less so i'm going to increase the sharpness okay now curves curves are basically changing the values of the photo uh, that is highlight shadows mid tones uh, blacks and the whites it's a different topic altogether it's a huge topic altogether but let me give you one basic thing basic tip if you want if you just hold this button this line if you take it put it pull it up slightly okay and make a one more point and put bring it down a little bit it will give you that film look faded film look that kind of rusty vibe you can just see this gives you that kind of rusty vibe okay it's a whole topic all together curves very long topic we'll cover it in next time if we get a chance next is white balance white balance is basically nothing but the giving you correct color of the, your photo if your photo looks too orange or too green okay if it is not showing you the accurate color you can use white balance to increase the temperature of the photo or decrease it as per your liking at the same time if you hold and pull it down it also uses you to 
tint change the tint of the photo make it more reddish pinkish or greenish as per your choice i'm not gonna change anything over here because i'm finding the photo really well crop basically the crop so i'm gonna crop the photo slightly photo slightly now next is rotate now basically i want to rotate the photo slightly so that the camera looks straight next part is healing now healing what it does is that it will allow you to remove some blemishes or some spot like a pimple on a face so here i want to remove this part okay these are some bits and pieces i want to remove so go to tools select healing very important very important is that you zoom into the photo if you just remove it it won't look good so zoom in okay and just wipe it down done so i want to remove some more bits I'll like this green leaves on the side i'm going to remove this if you make a mistake you can just like this if you make a mistake like this you can just press the undo button okay then start it all, all over again one thing take your time in this because and zoom in into the image zoom in so that you can remove the minute details like this one more okay this so if you press and hold this was the earlier image now it is like this now coming back to the main thing which i showed you in the in the beginning is black and some part is black and white some part is colored so i'm gonna go for the black and white okay i'm gonna reduce the brightness slightly increase the contrast okay i want over here the camera to be black and white and the surrounding to be coloring how do you do it if you see on the top right there are four buttons okay there's one button with the arrow going behind tap on it okay in that you will see view edits okay this will show you all the edits that you have done to your photo from beginning to end the last one is black and white i'm gonna tap on it you will see three buttons again first one is to delete second i'll come to it third one is to adjust the black and white again that is contrast brightness whatever you want middle one is called stack brush so here it will allow you to paint or make the part black and white whichever you want in the image so i'm going to show you i'm going to make it completely 100 on the below part it can increase or decrease the uh, saturation point or the power of that particular thing if it make it completely zero nothing will be black and white make it 25 percent 50 percent or 100 so i'm going to start with 100 and i'm just going to brush it all the part which i want don't worry if something goes overboard we'll correct it okay now this is a rough thing which i have done now you will see that there are many areas i have got overboard how do you correct it just minus it to zero okay zoom in zoom in and slowly remove the excess brush by mistake if you remove the black and white part also just go back to 100 zoom in and make it black and white again this is how you do it take your time over here do not hurry Now, if you want to see how much of the image you have affected, if you see there is a eyeball, tap on it, it will show you which part of the image you have brushed. Okay, now some part was left, I'm gonna brush it. So there you go, 
you can see that the camera is black and white and the background is coloring if you want to go opposite you can see that there is a button on the bottom left the second button which will invert the things if you want the background to be black and white you can just invert it so press it right button and done now if you see here one tip i'll give you is that when you go to view edits okay it lists all the edits that you have done now here in the stack brush it will allow you to paint whatever area the brush whatever area which you want to be affected this can apply to every other tool in the snapseed for example tune if you want to tune the image and want to affect the image at one particular area what you can do you can tune the image entirely go to view edits and again brush the part which you want to be affected so small tip so next is perspective so what it does is that if you or photo is slightly looking at the left if it is a building slightly tilted or whatever or perspective is changed you can use it to correct the pers perspective so go to perspective you can just change it slightly and the rest of the thing will be filled by the app itself so it was looking like this now it is looking like this now here it is from this to this in just couple of minutes so next image let's jump on to the next image where i will show you how to add sky to or clouds to an image where there are no clouds okay this is the second image okay i'll show you how to add fake clouds or sky if you want to call it to this image okay so let's start some basic editing first okay so main thing is adding fake clouds or sky how do you do it first thing you need to download a sky background from google okay or pin interest okay keep it ready and go to tools go to double exposure in double exposure you can take two images and lay it on top of each other to make it a new image you can take multiple images stack it on top of each other and make it a new image we can use the same thing to add fake clouds in our image okay so what you're gonna do press the plus sign i have already downloaded one uh, cloud okay this is the cloud which i already downloaded i'm gonna adjust as per my liking okay now i'm gonna increase the opacity that is a second button from the right okay tick mark it now just like the previous photo where i showed you how to brush the certain part of the photo black and white same way you go to the view edits part okay view edits double exposure the middle one now it will allow you to brush the area which you want now i'm going to start from 25 percent okay i'm going to brush slowly from top i'm going to make it to 50 percent slowly add clouds this is how you do it and tick mark and that's it you are done we have taken this image from this to this in just few minutes now it's up to you how you want to use these tools to your advantage basically sky is the limit now i have just showed you two images in this video you can just go through some more images which i'm gonna show you right now where i have used snapseed to edit them you can use the, this software in your own way start exploring this software you will find new new things so that's it for the editing part let's jump on the tips part let's start with the second part of the video that is tips first tip i want to give you is this something which is overlooked by many is to clean that 
lens. What I mean by that, basically, we keep our phones at various places, on our tables, on our beds, in our pockets. So there are chances that it can get dirty and it can affect your images quality because there are some dirt on that, it can affect your images. So basic thing, clean that, then start clicking. Second tip is also very easy to overlook, that is to tap to focus. What I mean by that, when you take a photo in your camera, many what they do, they just take the camera, frame it and just click it. It's very important that you tap on the subject which you want to be in the focus or to be very sharp. Just tap it, get it into focus and get the photo very sharp. Very easy to miss but it's very important to do also. Third tip is to use the manual mode. If your camera has a manual mode also called as pro mode then please start using it. It will open up a new different dimension in your mobile photography. But here I want to attack one part in that manual mode that is ISO. What is ISO? To simplify it in a simple language, ISO is nothing but adding artificial light into your photos. Example, if you are in a darker environment where there is less light, you can increase the ISO and get a brighter image. But the side effect is that if you increase the ISO too much, it can make the photo very grainy. For example, if you take your mobile and shoot outdoors, the photo is very very clear. But if you shoot indoors, it is not that clear, it is not that sharp, it is certainly having that grain. So start playing with that ISO. Let me show you an example of what exactly I mean. Okay, this photo was shot by keeping the ISO at auto level. As you can see, it is not having that sharpness. It is bright, but it is not having that sharpness. This photo was taken at ISO 100. As you can see, it is too dark. This photo was shot at ISO 800. As you can see, it is sharp, also well exposed and you can use it really really well. After editing this photo, I got this. I used the healing tool in the snapshot to remove the wires. Fourth tip is to use the Gcam, also called as Google Camera App, also called as Pixel Camera App. Download that app if your mobile supports it. That app, that single app will take your photo from this quality to this quality in just a minute. The software work that Google has done, it is far superior to your default camera app. So start using that Pixel camera app. Next tip, take that mobile and turn it upside down. What I mean by that, when you shoot this way, the camera is on top. Okay, it will give you a different view. But when you turn it upside down, it will give you a different perspective altogether. Let me show you an example. If you see this photo, it was shot in a normal way like this, keeping the camera like this. It's good, not bad. This was shot turning the camera upside down. You can see it gives a different perspective altogether. Next tip, very important tip, is to understand the light. What I mean by that, start learning how lighting will affect your photos, the direction of the light, the quality of the light, what kind of light you are using, whether it is sunlight, natural light, whether it is a window light, okay, whether it is a normal tube light, okay, the direction, if you see I am being lit from this side right now and the tube light up top, there is no light from this side, that's why this side is darker. So start understanding how lighting will affect your photo. So it will help you to take better images down the line because you have understood how lighting affects your image from where it is coming, how strong the light is, whether it is in afternoon, whether it is up top, right on top of your head in the afternoon time, how it's going to affect your image, you need to learn that. Start learning the light. Next tip I want to give you is a composition tip, very very easy to use, that is rule of thirds. Basically it is dividing your frame into nine equal boxes or two vertical lines and two horizontal lines and the point is to keep your subject at this intersection points what it does is that it draws the attention of your viewer to that subject let me show you some examples this bird if you see it is having that same rule of third applied same for this dog bird here, one thing you have to remember is that you don't have to shoot exactly in the rule of thirds. 
okay here you can use shoot and then compose what i mean by that you can shoot wide okay and then in editing app you can crop as per the rule of thirds next tip is not related to mobile photography as such but it is related to uploading photos on instagram now if you see on instagram it allows you to upload horizontal photos in its full length but if you take a vertical photo it won't allow you to upload in its full length now what you can do you can have two options first to crop the image in the aspect ratio of 5 is to 4 this way it will allow you to upload in the full length but if you are like me who doesn't like to upload in the crop format what you can do you can download an app called no crop there are many apps on play store called no crop download the list mb wala app and you are good to go put the image in that app it will put two white bars and you can upload in the full length on instagram last thing is to have fun it is not a competition out there to take the best photo so it's very important that you enjoy the photography go out there start shooting it doesn't matter which mobile you have whether it is an iphone or a 5000 rupee phone you are already having a good camera with you it's up to your imagination how you take a good photo a cheap mobile doesn't mean that it is having a bad camera it's up to your imagination up to your creativity how you use that mobile to get better images and that's it for this video today i hope you learned something if you have any doubts you can ask me on my instagram or on my facebook i'm happy to help and once again thank you to department of english of nan prasad college for giving me this chance to teach you something thank you Thank you Shankar for the tips and tricks which you gave us. I love to take photos and upload it on Facebook. Now I will take your advice how to handle the mobile and what background I should choose. Definitely our students also have learned something from you. Thank you very much. The last resource person of the webinar lecture series is Bhagya Lakshmi Kedekar who is smart and hard working. She is very good at communication skills, participated in elocution competitions and won the prizes. She is arts and hobby craft fanatic. She loves to teach others and that is her passion. She has her YouTube channel which is known as Blush and Bloom. I present before you Ms. Bhagya Lakshmi Kedekar who is going to give the hands-on training. Her topic for the day is Let's Quill, a tutorial on how to make quilling jewelry. Bhagya Lakshmi, please start. Welcome to this tutorial on how to make quilling jewelry. I am Bhagya Lakshmi, your tutor for the day. I am a postgraduate student of commerce. Art and craft is my hobby. So today I will be sharing with you all some simple and easy ways in which you can customize your own jewelry. Quilling is an art in which quilling paper is used to form different patterns of different sizes and shape to create a design. Before we start with the video, I would like to thank Nyan Prasarath Mandal College for giving me this wonderful opportunity to share this fun activity with you all. So let's get started. These are the materials we require for our peeling project. We need some sequin stickers, a scissor, some glue, jewelry hooks, a quilling needle, tweezer, and some quilling papers. First jewelry we are going to make is this earring. We have to first form a ring. You can use any round object to get a circular shape. We will use one strip of black quilling paper to form a ring. Once you get the desired shape, you have to start forming a tight coil. We will apply some glue at the end and stick the paper in place. You have to hold it for a few seconds so that the paper can stick properly.
we will also apply some glue on the edge of this ring so that it remains firm. Once we are done making the ring, we will create these tight coils. I am using a light grey coloured quilling paper to form a tight coil. We will need 5 of these. I have already attached 5 coils together. I will apply some glue at the bottom of the ring and stick the coils in place. I am also going to add a hook to our earring. With this our first earring is ready. Next we are going to make this black earring. We have to make a similar ring like the previous one. Then to form a tight coil, we have to use half black colored quilling paper and start making a tight coil. We have to stick all the coils around the ring. Next, we will take a black strip to create a border for our design. Once this is ready, we have to form some loose coils. To make a loose coil, I am using half black colored quilling paper. We have to hold the paper very lightly so that it forms a loose coil. Then you can adjust the size accordingly. We will stick these loose coils at the bottom of the earring. We will also add a hook to our earring and some sequin stickers to make it look more attractive. With this, our earrings are ready. For our next earring, we will use any round object to form a ring. I'm using a glue bottle so that I get a proper circular shape. We will apply some glue at the end and carefully take out the ring. We will also apply some glue on the edge of the ring. Now let's start working on the design. To create this design, we will use half strip of quilling paper. We have to mark the middle point on quilling paper. And we have to start 
making a coil from both the sides. Once this is done, this is how our design should look. We will apply some glue in between the coils and stick them in place. We will need four such coils. Next, we are going to make these tight coils. For this, we will divide the quilling paper into four equal parts. Then we have to start forming a very tight coil with a small piece of quilling paper. We need four such coils. Then let's place a design inside the ring. Now we have to form a very loose coil to place it right in between the design. We will use half quilling paper to form a loose coil. We will apply some glue on it and place it right in between. Once this is done, we are going to add a tassel to our ring. Let's add some pearl stickers to make the earring look more attractive.
finally we are going to add a hook to our earring. With this our earrings are ready. Next we are going to make this beautiful bracelet. We will use a half strip of blue acrylic paper. This is a 3mm strip. We have to start forming a loose coil. Then we will apply some glue at the end and stick the paper in place. Now to form a petal, you have to just press at one end. Your petal should look something like this. We need six petals to make one flower. We will also need a half white colored quilling paper to create a tight quill in between. I have kept some petals ready. Now let's assemble them together. We will place a tight white color coil in between. I have applied some sequin stickers to give it a nice look. So I've connected his flask with the help of the silver rings. With this, it is ready. Next, we are going to make this cute pendant. This is very, very simple to make. You have to select any three colors of your choice. We are going to um, stick all the three strips together. And then we have to start forming a very very tight coil. If you are not comfortable doing it with the needle, you can do it with your hands. Once you reach at the end, we will apply some glue and stick the paper in place. Now you can completely stop at this particular step and make some starts like these. And if you want to form a pattern, then we are just going to press the coil at one end. You will have to apply some pressure onto the paper. So this is how you can form a pattern. We will join 5 petals to form a flower. So with this, our pendant is ready. Next I have made this 
neck piece using the same technique. I have used three different colors of paper to form a tight coil. And then I have given it a shape of petal. I have used 7 mm quilling paper for this. We have joined all the petals together. I have also attached a chain to it. So we have to attach three flaps together to form a neck piece like this. This is how it looks. So with this, we are done with our session. You can use different colors to customize this jewelry to match it with your outfit. I hope you enjoyed this session and I hope it inspires you to customize your own jewellery. I had a lot of fun making this video. Once again, I would like to thank Nyan Prasad of Mandalus College for giving me this opportunity. Thank you for watching. Thank you Bhagya Lakshmi. We have so many students who are good at hands-on training, but we have little time to accommodate all. So, we have selected these two resource persons. Hope our students would learn something from these two resource persons. With this, we come to the concluding session of the International Webinar Lecture Series, JIT Case 0.2. It was an amazing experience for each and every one of us. As organizers, we had a wonderful time with our speakers. I thank all the resource persons for spending their valuable time and energy to prepare their speeches. There were 14 speakers who had mesmerized the audience. It is not that easy to prepare for a lecture. It needs lots of time and references. All our resource persons are great. I just asked them and they agreed to give. It was something a surprise for me. Giving a lecture in a classroom is something different and it is easy too. But giving a lecture in a virtual classroom is entirely different. You might have observed me for the past 7 days. I was very conscious to sit in front of the camera and talk. I felt that I was someone else in front of the camera. All our young speakers were so natural and real in front of the camera. Hats off to you all. God bless you all. I thank our principal Dr. D.B. Arulka for his encouragement and support to organize the webinar lecture series. I thank all the participants for their enthusiastic participation. Please remember, fill the feedback forms to receive your certificates. I thank all my departmental colleagues who had worked hard to make this webinar a grand success. A special thanks to Mr. Subhash Kamalka who worked day and night to view all the sessions. He had done wonders with merging everyone's speech in a technical way. Thank you, Subhash. We may meet you all for another webinar in future. Take care of you. Follow the norms of COVID-19. Cases are increasing in Goa. Be safe and stay healthy. I call upon my young colleague, Mr. Subhash Kamalka, to propose the vote of thanks. So there we have it. We have come to the end of this long journey called Sai 0.2. To start off, I would like to thank our speakers for the day, Mr. Shankar Nadkarni and Ms. Bhagya Lakshmi Khedekar for their very insightful sessions. Mr. Shankar gave us an insight into simple tricks about how we can use the basic cell phone softwares which, which are available with us to get the best out of any picture which we click. Whereas Ms. Bhagya Lakshmi gave us a new hobby maybe which we can pursue and some can pursue as a career. So, on behalf of the Department of English of Nyan Prasarak Mandras College and Research Center, Asagam, I would like to thank both the speakers of the day for their insightful guidance to our audience. Friends, we have come to the end of this journey called Zaitkai 0.2. Seven days of wonderful knowledge gathering, seven days of experience gathering, seven days of skill gathering 
in the seven days each and every one of you who has been with us has learned something or the other through the experiences through the talks through the narrations and through the skills of our speakers i would like to thank all the participants who attended all the lectures of this particular lecture series i would like to take this opportunity to thank our principal dr db arolkar who has been the pillar of strength behind the department of english and who has been proactive in enabling us to organize such initiatives i would also like to thank dr am shanti the head of the department of english who has been very keen and interested in shifting the paradigm with regards to taking the offline classes the physical class structure online and this was one attempt wherein we wanted the students to come online experience or rather have the feel of the lectures online i would like to thank my department colleagues ma'am sarika ms lizella and ms fabiola rosha for being there for being supportive of all the endeavors and wholeheartedly contributing towards them last but not the least i thank each and every one of you once again and wish you all a very good day